Hi everyone, my name is Steve. Today we're going to go through one classic approach, one classic algorithm to solve a series of problems. We can almost use the identical code to solve it, at least four problems on lead code. So this is a very classical and typical algorithm that we could apply to a lot of problems. And of course, you're going to encounter it problems in your actual interview. We'll use this one as an example to go through this first max consecutive ones three. What the problem is saying is given an array A of zeros and ones, we may change up to k values from zero to one. So this k is a variable. It could change like in the given example, example one, first example k equals to two, the second example k equals to three, k could be equal to any different number as long as k is, is smaller than or equal to the length of the array a. The output of this one is going to be six. Why? Because we can change up to two zeros to one, and then we can get the longest consecutive ones of this changed array. The length of that array is six. So explanation here, we can change this zero to one, this zero to one. That's going to give us this sub array that has the longest length and all of the elements inside this sub array is one. Make sense? Let's take a look at the second example. In this example, k equals to three. That means we can change up to three numbers from zero to one. Which three did we change? We changed this, this, and this. This gives us the longest sub array that has all elements which are one. So that is the longest one. Length of that is 10. So we're returning 10. How can we approach this problem? One typical approach is that we can use a two pointer technique. The right one keeps moving until it reaches the end. And along the way, how do we know which ones should we flip? Which zeros should we flip? How do we maintain that state? Because this max consecutive ones could come from any sub array. How do we keep track of that? So we use a second variable or we call it slow pointer. Slow pointer points towards the left. Any sub array that's segmented by these two pointers, for example, the pointer here, slow pointer is pointing here, fast pointer is pointing here. Any sub array pointed out by these two pointers, they always contain at a max of k zeros. So this is the invariable state that we are going to keep, we're going to maintain while we go through this array. And during this process, we can keep updating the result. We'll just call it max length so that in the end, we can simply just return the final max length. It's kind of abstract to talk like that. So we'll use a simple example to go through this. For example, we simplify k to be only one and we want to find the maximum possible length that we can find by flipping only one zero to be one. How can we do that? We use two variables. One is j, one is i. j is the fast pointer that keeps moving until it reaches the end of the given array. And i is the slow pointer, which keeps moving, but it will keep the distance between i and j. Any elements fall in this segment will have at most k, which is equal to one, has at most one zero. Let's take a look at the code. We have a for loop, j, j keeps moving, which is the fast pointer as long, as soon as fast pointer reaches the end, then we'll just break out. Here is the actual code. We always need to check if this one, the fast pointer, we always need to check whether the fast pointer is pointing towards a zero. If that is the case, we need to decrement k immediately because that means we encountered n zero. The max that we can bear in such a sliding window is k, which is one in this case. So we need to decrement. The second logic is while k is smaller than zero, we need to keep incrementing i until we shrink the window size to have enough zeros have them left behind us then we are safe to move on this is what this while loop actually means this is a template code that we can put to use to solve a lot of problems and along the way we'll maintain this variable we we'll just call it result in this case the result it could be the max already we reached in that case we'll just keep using max we'll just keep using result Otherwise, we'll use j minus i. j is the fast pointer, i is the slow pointer. The distance between fast and slow pointer is the max length, if it is greater than the current result. This is the logic. Let's walk through. First, in the very beginning, both j and i, they are starting at zero. So numbers j equals to zero, that's correct. So we'll decrement k by one, which means k becomes zero. Continue, move on. Now we need to increment j because here, J is uh, here, K is not smaller than zero. We don't do anything here. And here, 
0 minus 0 is still 0, so result is still 0. Then we move on. j plus 1. j plus 1, j moves to here. Now j is not equal to 0. So what we will have is, and k is not smaller than 0 either. So we don't enter this while loop. Instead, what we have is we can update result now because we have 1, 1. The length of the max result at this moment is 1, right? Because 1 minus 0 is 1. Okay, 0 compared with 1, that is 1. The max result we have is 1. All right, move on. At this point, what do we have? Because we increment j again, j is 2, 2 minus 0 is 2. All right, then here, 3 minus 0 is 3. Result so far we got is 3. The max length of consecutive ones is 3. All right, perfect. Moving on. Next, we got j equals numbers nums j equals to 0. All right, at this point, we need to decrement k by 1. k is minus 1 at this point, which means we need to enter while loop now. So k is smaller than 0. At this point, we check nums i. Nums i is equal to 0. Is that the case? Yes, that is the case, which means we can leave this 0 behind us because we have another 0 here and the max we can reach is only one zero. k initially is 1. All right, we move i towards the right. All right, i towards the right and k is incremented. The max result didn't change because because 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 is not greater than 3, so the max result is still 3. Then we increment j. j becomes at this position. We actually do have a greater max length, which is this one. j is equal to 5 and i is equal to 1. So 5 minus 1 is 4. So we have a better, a greater, a larger result, which is 4. So continue, j will increment. Now we have 6 minus 1, then we have a greater length, which is 5. So at this point, we can pause and say, based on plain sight, just take a look at this one case. The initial k is given to 1, which means we can flip up to only 1, 0 to 1. Now we know the max length, which is we should flip this one. The max length is going to give us 5, excluding this one. If we include this one, it's going to be 6. Then we can plus 1 here. That's going to make it work. All right, then we'll continue to move on. We'll increment j. j becomes here. So we have j equals to 0. So then we'll decrement k again. So you see, we are following the same pattern. So these two pointers will keep iterating through until the fast pointer reaches the end of this given original input array. So k decrements. Now we need to enter this while loop coming here. So i will keep incrementing, right? We can The max we can have is up to 1, 0 in between this range. i keeps going up, i keeps going up. At this point, nums i is equal to 0, so we'll increment k. Now k equals to 0. Then we increment i and we break out of this while loop. So we'll, deck, we'll increment j again. j keeps going up, then j keeps going up. At this point, j has reached the end of this given input array. Now we can safely return the final result, which is five. This is the algorithm. I hope this visualized walkthrough could make sense and could help people better understand how the sliding window really works. We use two pointers, slow and fast pointer, and along the way, we keep updating the result. That's the core idea of understanding a sliding window. Now we can quickly put the ideas into the actual code to solve all of these four problems almost using identical code. So let's first tackle this problem. Here we have, we'll initialize a variable, which is called a result as we put it in the code, as we saw in the slide. In the end, we return result. So we all have two variables, two pointers, i and j. As long as the fast pointer, which is j in this case, is smaller than the length of this array, j keeps going up. And first, we'll check the fast pointer, whether this one is equal to 0. If this one is equal to 0, then we'll decrement k, right? And then we'll have a while loop. We'll try to shift the slow pointer towards the right to leave any other zeros behind us. That's what it means. While k is smaller than 0, what we'll do is 
will check, will try to find the zeros on the left side to move towards the right. To what you will try to move the slow pointer towards the right and move and leave those unnecessary zeros behind us. So we'll move i a i equals to zero, and then we'll increment k in this case, and we'll always keep incrementing i so that we shift i towards the right. We'll move the slow pointer towards the right. And then we'll compare if result result will keep updating the max length along the way. Here we need to plus one. That is because we are flipping. We're not deleting. So we're flipping ones to ze we're flipping zeros. We're changing zeros to one. So that's why we need to plus one here. Yeah, this is the actual code. Let me quickly run it to see if there is any syntax error. There is one. What is this? Cannot find symbol nums. Okay, this should be a. Nothing else. All right, let's run it again. All right, accept it. Let me quickly hit submit. All right, accept it. This is the number one. Number two, let's solve this one. We can use almost identical code. Let me just do quickly copy. Let me just quickly copy this code. We can just put it here directly. And we can change this one to be to use the same parameter name. And we'll initialize a k to be one in this case. That's it, because this API signature it doesn't have k. So we'll just put k there. And k in this case is equal to one. So this problem, uh, legal 1493, is basically a subset of this one, right? This one is like in general problem. So now let's hit run code and see. Wrong answer. Okay, I need to remove this plus one because this one is deleting. It's not flipping, right? That is why I output it four, but the actual expected one is three. Let me run it again. All right, accept it. Submit. Also accept it. Cool. Let me copy this one. Exactly the same code into this one nums this one is nums let me change it to be a find max consecutive ones that means k we need k to be zero that means we can we don't need to flip or delete any zeros to be one so we don't allow any zeros that means k should be zero let me just hit submit a run code again run code first accept it now let's hit submit all right, also accept it. Now we have this one, max consecutive ones, legal problem 487. We can still use the same code, almost identical code. Let's copy this one and put it here and change the parameter name to be A to make it consistent. Let's see, the problem of this one is asking us to find the maximum number of ones in there where you can flip at most one zero. Okay, one zero, that means K equals to one. That's it. Let's see. Run code first. All right, accept it. Let me submit. Accept it. So you see, this is a very generic solution. Of course, we can still apply almost identical code to solve other similar sliding window problem. A big shout out to Lee, who has summarized all of these in his post. So I hope this video does help clarify how sliding window could help to solve interview problems or lead code problems. If this video is helpful, please do me a favor and hit the like button. That's going to help a lot with the YouTube algorithm and I really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel as we continue to go through a lot of interesting interview or lead code or Amazon Web Services problems. And please leave me any comment questions down in the comment section below. I would really appreciate to see any feedback. That's it for today's video. Thank you very much. I'll see you guys in the next one.